What if I told you that most of the universe is invisible to us? That there are mysterious forces and substances that shape the cosmos, but we don't know what they are or how they work? Sounds like science fiction, right? But it's actually a scientific fact. In this episode, we're going to explore the dark universe, the realm of dark matter and dark energy, two of the biggest mysteries in modern physics. We're also going to see how two amazing space telescopes, the James Webb Space Telescope and the Euclid spacecraft, are teaming up to shed some light on these dark secrets. Are you ready to join us on this cosmic adventure? Let's go. So, what are dark matter and dark energy, and why are they so mysterious? Well, let's start with dark matter. Dark matter is a type of matter that does not interact with light or any other form of electromagnetic radiation. That means we can't see it or detect it directly with our telescopes or instruments. But we know it exists because we can see its effects on the visible matter around it. For example, dark matter affects the way galaxies rotate, the way light bends around massive objects, and the way structures form in the universe. Scientists think that dark matter makes up about 27% of the universe, but they don't know what it is made of. Some possible candidates are exotic particles that have not been discovered yet, such as axions, wimps, or machos. On the other hand, dark energy is even more mysterious than dark matter. Dark energy is a mysterious force that causes the expansion of the universe to accelerate. That means that the universe is not only expanding, but expanding faster and faster over time. This was a surprising discovery that was made in 1998 by two teams of astronomers who were studying distant supernova. They found that these exploding stars were farther away than expected, implying that the universe was expanding faster than previously thought. Scientists think that dark energy makes up about 68% of the universe, but they don't know what it is or how it works. Some possible explanations are a cosmological constant, a form of energy inherent to space itself, or a modification of Einstein's theory of gravity. As you can see, dark matter and dark energy are two of the most intriguing and challenging puzzles in physics today. They challenge our understanding of the nature of reality and the fate of the universe. But how can we solve these puzzles if we can't see or measure them directly? Well, that's where some amazing space missions come in. One of these missions is the James Webb Space Telescope, and as you know, it is designed to study some of the most distant and ancient objects in the universe, such as the first stars and galaxies that formed after the Big Bang. But James can also help us learn more about dark matter. In fact, Webb has already made a remarkable discovery about dark matter in its first year of operation. Using its powerful instruments, it has observed a galaxy cluster called Abel 3827, which is located about 1.3 billion light-years from Earth. A galaxy cluster is a group of hundreds or thousands of galaxies that are bound together by gravity. But what makes Abel 3827 special is that it contains four colliding galaxies that are surrounded by huge halos of dark matter. By studying the images and spectra of these galaxies and their halos, James Webb was able to measure how fast they are moving relative to each other and to us. And what it found was surprising. One of the dark matter halos was lagging behind its galaxy by about 5,000 light years. This means that there was some kind of friction or interaction between the dark matter halo and something else in the cluster. This finding is important because it could provide clues about what dark matter is made of and how it behaves. If dark matter only interacts with gravity, as most theories assume, then it should not experience any friction or drag from other forces or particles. But if dark matter interacts with something else, such as itself, or some unknown force or particle, then it could slow down or deviate from its expected path. This discovery could also help us test some alternative theories of gravity that try to explain dark energy without invoking a mysterious force or substance. Some of these theories predict that gravity behaves differently on large scales than on small scales, and that this could affect how dark matter moves and clusters in the universe. Webb's observations of a Bell 3827 could help us test these theories and compare them with the standard model of cosmology, which assumes that gravity works the same everywhere and that dark energy is a cosmological constant. 
But James Webb is not the only space mission that will help us investigate dark matter and dark energy. There is another mission that will complement and enhance Webb's capabilities, the Euclid spacecraft. The Euclid spacecraft is a European mission that was launched in June 2022 and reached its orbit around L2, the same point as James Webb, in August 2022. Euclid is a visible and near-infrared telescope that is designed to map the distribution and evolution of dark matter and dark energy in the universe. Euclid will do this by surveying more than a billion galaxies across 15,000 square degrees of the sky, covering about a third of the entire sky. Euclid will use two main techniques to study dark matter and dark energy, weak gravitational lensing and galaxy clustering. Weak gravitational lensing is a phenomenon that occurs when light from distant galaxies is distorted by the gravity of the intervening matter, both visible and dark. By measuring the shapes and orientations of these galaxies, Euclid will be able to map the distribution of dark matter in the universe and how it changes over time. Galaxy clustering is a phenomenon that occurs when galaxies tend to group together in certain patterns, depending on their distance and age. By measuring the positions and redshifts of these galaxies, Euclid will be able to measure how fast the universe is expanding and how this expansion is affected by dark energy. Euclid will also use another technique called baryon acoustic oscillations, or BAO for short. BAO are sound waves that were created in the early universe when matter and radiation were tightly coupled. These sound waves left imprints on the distribution of matter in the universe, creating a characteristic scale that can be used as a cosmic ruler to measure distances and expansion rates. By combining these three techniques, Euclid will be able to measure some of the key parameters of cosmology, such as the density and equation of state of dark energy, the density and nature of dark matter, and the curvature and age of the universe. Euclid will also be able to test some alternative theories of gravity and dark energy, such as scalar tensor theories or modified gravity theories. But Euclid will not work alone. It will work together with JWST to achieve even better results. JWST and Euclid have complementary strengths and weaknesses. For example, JWST can observe deeper and farther than Euclid, but it has a smaller field of view and a lower resolution. Euclid can observe wider and sharper than JWST, but it has a lower sensitivity and a higher noise level. By combining their data and images, JWST and Euclid will be able to improve their measurements of dark matter and dark energy, reduce their uncertainties and errors, and cross-check their results. They will also be able to study some interesting phenomena that require both infrared and visible observations, such as gravitational lensing by galaxy clusters or supernovae explosions. Together, JWST and Euclid will form a powerful team that will help us shed some light on the dark side of the universe. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos about space exploration. And don't forget to leave your comments below with your questions or suggestions for future topics. Until next time, stay curious.